Yeah, it, Sheba's uh, been an interesting one. To start with, we closed the month down under 5%. And we've been had positive closes for the last five weeks. So to me, I mean, you can kind of see it when you look on a look on a, a shorter term chart, but really a, to me, it looks like Sheba has been forming a, it's been a bottoming process over the last month or, or more. And it's taken the shape of a inverse head and shoulders pattern. You can see this is on a six hour chart. It's uh, we're, we're sitting here, we, we triggered the neckline a couple of days ago. And now we've shifted back, drifted backwards, which is, which is natural considering how we were overbought on pretty much every time level except the daily basis. So that's only natural that we'd see. And I think we were up around close to 100% or 90% uh, by the time we did trigger the neckline. So that's a natural pullback in, in that. One of the things that does stand out though, that it, that may be an obstacle is the 50 day simple moving average now is in play. And that just happens to be running right down on top of price. So that could be a bit of a barrier for, for price in the short term. But uh, at this point, for me, it's a bottoming process. You've got a moving uh, measured move target of 80%, which would take us close to the 38.2 retracement of the, of the March crash. I think a more realistic scenario for it is we get up and we test this area here, which is around 1220, 1214, I believe, 1204, 1214, uh, which would take us up about 30%, I believe, from let's say if we draw the neckline there, it's about 30% to that high. That seems like a more realistic scenario for Shiba at this point. But and unless we, we drop down and we actually take the low of the right shoulder, which would be pretty close to taking the low of the head, the pattern would be invalidated at that point. Otherwise, we could even see this pull back into into the six hour or the sorry, the 56 hour uh, simple moving average, which comes in at about 753. So general I'm tilted bullish on this. Uh, I think it's been a long bottoming process, but the 50 day moving average is going to be a bit of a stumbling block in the, in the short term. Yeah. I mean, you're you're on the six hour chart, so I'm guessing this yes. the you're still talking about the fifty day or the fifty or I mean or the fifty six hour. No, oh, I see. Yeah, I, I see. I see. You see the fifty mm -hmm. coming down here. Mm -hmm. It just became visible, and it just happens to be running right above price now. So you're going to have that resistance to deal with. But I, you know, in terms of looking at it overall i mean it's a much cleaner view when you look at it i use a six hour for this it can use a four hour nine hour it's just a much cleaner view and you can see the pattern how it's set up but i think the you know to be realistic i think a 30 percent move from the neckline uh, is probably what we'll see on a firm breakout above the neckline i see i see um that's that's interesting yeah um it's it's, it's cool how also the this is that the 206 hour moving average is also right where the daily yeah, correct. where yeah. the daily is uh so it kind of like gives you a, a a good resistance and support to be looking at whether for this thing to go up or go down but uh basically a rejection of that uh 206 hour moving average or the 50 day moving average then you have it go down to to the 56 hour right yeah i mean really at this point uh there doesn't need to be a a, a failed test of the 50 days simple moving average it could just continue to to drift lower like it's been doing over the last day and a half or so i think that's a more reasonable expectation because we did see a gain of about 90 to 100 percent here off the lows mm -hmm. and we reached overbought conditions Sorry, overbought conditions here on the six hour. I believe on the nine hour there was overbought conditions. I'm I sure in 12. Mm -hmm. On the four hour, of course, there was overbought conditions. So we're just releasing that overbought situation uh, at this point. Unless we break below uh, the 56 hour simple moving average, uh, this looks like it's going to be a successful rally for Shiva. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting to see because. Uh 
I'm, I'm gonna share my screen now. But uh, I, instead of a, of a head and shoulders pattern, I was actually looking at, at something like a, like a descending, uh, yeah, like a descending parallel channel right here. Oh my gosh. Uh, of course, it's not the, the best descending parallel channel ever, right? But I'm I'm actually looking at a, at a potential test of that uh, lower support around like 68, whatever pennies or whatever you call this, uh, before it potentially like rebounds, right? And takes aim again at this level, right? And if we have a break, then we have that potential 30% upswing that you're also seeing kind of like to the 78.6 uh, Fibonacci, right? From that, uh, from this high until the, the recent low. Uh, but but if this level fails to hold, we say, I believe you have it at 75, uh, that 56 hour moving average. Actually, we can. It's probably, at, um, yes, 75. Yeah, we could probably have it here as well. Yeah, which actually, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a strong support right here as well. Also, with the with the 100 and you have kind of like a like a you know golden cross right here between the 100 and the 50 so in and it's trending higher which is good you always you always want moving out for support when there when trend lines like that or moving averages are there underneath price you would prefer them to be rising yeah yeah definitely so i'm actually i'm actually now that i see this golden cross right here I, I will potentially link for a for a test of that golden cross, which assets tends tend to do whenever a golden or a death cross are formed, and then a potential rebound. And of course, I will not be bullish until I have a, a six hour per se candlestick close above ninety five, which then could potentially throw it to seventy eight six. But if we do come back down here and we break sixty eight then to me that we're gonna make uh, a lower low and continue to trade within this potential uh, descending parallel channel that is like forming here before this thing goes something like this and then probably here or finally breaks out but but yeah f for me kind of like the same as sheldon um i mean you're potentially seeing it at a, at a bullish breakout within the next few hours right because i mean you want to you wanna also sit close above here but i may see a potential retest of this level right here 70, 75 to 68 before it actually comes up so in the short term leaning a little bit bearish in the sense that you know i'm expecting a little a steeper correction but in the you know longer term let's say within two days or three we could potentially have that retest of here and then we'll be trying to wait for a close above here so we can target the 78.6 i mean this is all pretty much short-term scenario so i bet akash you have like something similar or do you have any anything different uh it's kind of similar to what he just mentioned but i don't see it going down to the range though so let me just show So I'm kind of uh, bullish on uh, Shiba because it's uh, gotten extremely correlated to Bitcoin and uh, its pumps have uh, kind of been uh, overextending and uh, the retracements not so much. So which is a good thing to see in an altcoin. Uh, as you can see, I've marked out a couple of important uh, uh, stuff that happened here. Uh, it reacted nicely uh, of the, the El Salvador's news. The Coinbase listing absolutely like it just went nuts. Uh, and what's interesting here with the Elon Musk tweet is that it did not show a lot of reaction, uh, which is a good thing to see. And uh, the same thing is happening with Doge right now. Even though Doge is trending on Twitter and Elon Musk tweeted about it, I didn't see Doge pump a lot. Right. So back to uh, Shiba, you know, right. So uh, what happened here is like we quickly spiked up, and then uh, the retracement should have ended here, but then we came down, swept the lows here. Uh, and then we started rounds again, but this time around the rally was very slow and progressive. So I don't see it coming down uh, to the range low here. 
uh, or even here for that matter but what i would see happening is it sweep the range low here something like this and then go higher uh, since we've already tested the 70.5 fib like four five times one two three four yeah uh, so i think this is the time where we just go up uh do this right and then if bitcoin is still gonna go to 40k or something maybe climb above this sweep a couple of highs uh here and then th this is like a very uh bullish extremely bullish scenario for me uh come up here but if not i'm expecting it to stay above 70.5 for a while and maybe retrace and then give it another go and then test the range highs so this is what i'm expecting with 